Well, good evening. Uh, this is Dr. David Knox of the CAT AMDs, and uh, I'm going to give another uh, little short uh, uh, broadcast tonight. Uh, uh, the subject uh, that I'm going to talk about tonight is uh, cannabis and the elderly. Uh, this should be a subject that uh, ought to be all near and dear to your hearts because my children are saying that I am uh, becoming one of them. Horrors, I don't believe it, but uh, they keep ribbing me, so I um, figured out I'd learn a little something about the subject here. So uh, overall, you know, talking about cannabis use in the elderly is, is not too different than, uh, you know, all the other reasons that uh, uh, patients of any age uh, are going to benefit from it. Uh, you know, we've uh, had multiple talks about all the medical conditions that we see benefits and uh, uh, it's just a difference that uh, all folks seem to have them in spades. Um, but when you start looking at statistics of cannabis use, uh, some of it comes up that uh, older folks are said to be the fastest growing population of medical cannabis users in the United States. And uh, this uh, leads us into a little more fun with statistics. Um, you know, one article said that uh, probably 50% of medical cannabis users uh, in their surveys were over 50. And uh, another uh, population study that came out of California showed that uh, perhaps 2.2% uh, of people over age 65 in uh, California used cannabis medically. Um, but if you compare that to uh, you know, a recent uh, statistic where only 1.4% of uh, patients over 65 used it, uh, you're now looking at uh, a quick 50% uh, increase in uh, that population. Um, so statistics are always fun, how do you interpret them? Um, you know, another study showed that uh, in the age group of 55 to 59, uh, the use of uh, cannabis tripled uh, over the uh, decade of the 2000s. So, um, you know, statistics are statistics is kind of interesting. It's, it's always a little hard to know how you're going to interpret that. Um, so, why are we seeing such an increase in the elderly? Um, like I say, we're uh, simply talking about the benefits of cannabis for all these medical conditions and. Uh, uh, Old folks have just had more time to come up with them. You know, they've been out there living hard, uh, you know, having injuries, uh, developing other medical problems, and uh, so they just end up with a whole lot more things that uh, certainly can benefit from the use of cannabis. You know, cannabis can uh, really address uh, many of the typical problems related to aging, um, and I think it really does so like no other drug um, with fewer unwanted side effects uh, than uh, a lot of the pharmaceutical drugs that are on the uh, market today. Um, just uh, looking at a few of the common problems, uh, you know, arthritis and uh, other degenerative joint disease, degenerative disc disease in the spine, um, they're, they're just common and they're a common cause of chronic pain. And uh, chronic pain is really the most common reason for physicians to recommend the use of cannabis. Uh, you know, it often can relieve pain without uh, uh, over sedation um, or other side effects. It allows uh, people to treat pain with fewer narcotics or uh, other over-the-counter pain relievers. And, uh, um, you know, it just uh, has so many ways that it does benefit you. It, it has uh, multiple uh, uh, components in the full plant that have anti-inflammatory effect. You know, besides the THC and CBD, there's uh, uh, cannabinochromine, uh, beta-cytosterol, canaflavin A, beta-caryophylline. Um, you know, all of these uh, have strong anti-inflammatory effects as well. Um, there's even recent studies that uh, show well, folks with osteoporosis can benefit because cannabis can modulate bone growth and maintenance uh, as, as well. So, um, 
There's multiple other reasons old folks get chronic pain, uh, just old injuries, you know, neck and back pain is most common, uh, old fractures, uh, they develop neuropathies from conditions such as diabetes, uh, certainly cancer is associated with pain problems, and, uh, you know, cannabis has really been shown to be a great adjunct to all these other medications people get prescribed for treating those conditions. Um, not only that, it often helps with side effects. Opiates, for example, most common side effect is nausea, and uh, cannabis can uh, counteract that, as, as well as uh, uh, increasing the efficacy of the other medications. Um, one rat study I ran across said uh, you give a morphine uh, and a little touch of THC is all it takes, a 15 times more effective uh, than the morphine by itself. Um, Again, old folks, cancer is more common, um, and uh, you know, over the years, probably uh, uh, cannabis has been touted uh, most uh, uh, for treatment of side effects of cancer treatment, uh, particularly chemotherapy, and uh, you know, certainly uh, treats the pain. But uh, uh, more and more studies are coming out that uh, cannabis can have tumor-reducing properties as well. Um, I think we've had other talks on this. It uh, promotes apoptosis, that is, it uh, helps control the uh, division and multiplication of the cancer cells, and it also uh, halts angiogenesis, in that a growing tumor needs more blood supply. You stop the blood supply from developing, you limit the growth of the cancer. Uh, so these are all uh, other areas where cannabis can really be uh, uh, a help, and uh, uh, hopefully we're going to see you know, a whole lot more research coming out in those areas. Other areas that old folks have a lot of problem with, muscle spasms, tremors, uh, you know, they've had time to have old strokes, uh, spinal cord injuries, multiple sclerosis, cerebral palsy, Parkinson's disease, uh, what they call essential tremors. That means essentially we don't know what causes them, but you're having tremors. Uh, restless leg syndrome, these are all conditions that old folks uh, seem to have more problems with and uh, cannabis can uh, really help a lot with the muscle uh, relaxation uh, for those conditions. Um, some studies are showing that uh, cannabis develops, helps develop new neural pathways so you get uh, improved function and uh, you know stops further degradation of those conditions. Um, other degenerative neurologic conditions, uh, particularly Alzheimer's dementia, you know, that has multiple symptoms including agitation, anorexia, confusion, sleep disruption, um, you know, all of these things can be helped with cannabis. And uh, some people feel that getting old means you're going to get uh, anxious and depressed, uh, and uh, cannabis may help this. Um, hope that's not true. but. Uh, one thing I does hope that it helps with, it may even help with incontinence, which is a common problem for older folks. Um, I'm disrupting my video here a little bit. So overall, when you uh, compare cannabis to many of the other pharmaceuticals used to treat all these multiple problems, uh, cannabis has an excellent uh, profile of uh, uh, benefit and uh, safety. Um, so we've talked about uh, this before, you know, the, there's no fatal overdose, uh, it's not really physically addicting, um, and overall side effects to cannabis would be classified as mild and low risk. Um, probably the most common thing that uh, old folks seem to have trouble with is the euphoric mood, mood changes, and uh, you know, it can impede some of their cognitive function, their psychomotor performance a bit. Uh, but most of this is temporary impairment and uh, not, not a big concern. Uh, you start looking at uh, side effects of pharmaceutical medications, uh, it's amazing. Compared to, uh, uh, you know, that list, I can't even, you know, go through it all here and take too much time. Um, but if you just look at, at what you use for analgesics, uh, anti-inflammatories, the opiates, muscle relaxants, anti-emetics, anxiolytics, anxi uh, antidepressants. Uh, man, you just get blown away by the, the side effects that uh, are uh, basically uh, accepted 
uh, for the pharmaceutical use of those medications. Um, so anyway, you just start looking at all the, this information and it just really is uh, no wonder why many elderly patients uh, are turning to cannabis therapy. You know, it just, uh, just makes sense. Um, there was a, a few studies that have been done, uh, you know, not to huge numbers of patients, but I like the one uh, Israeli study where old folks between 69 and 101 were treated for a year with cannabis. And uh, overall, the statistics showed excellent results that they were able to maintain a healthy weight. Uh, they had much more control of muscle spasms and tremors, uh, much less stiffness and pain in the joints. They had uh, better sleep. Um, and uh, one of the biggest deals, they showed that they were able to decrease the number and the doses of uh, many of their other medications by an average of 1.7 medications per day. Uh, so if you're looking at an older folk who's on you know, 10 or 12 different medications, you get rid of even one or two of those, it can make a, a big difference. Um, so overall, uh, you know, things sound, uh, sound good, but uh, you still have to uh, worry. Uh, does this really mean that cannabis is a panacea for old folks? I mean, this is enough to make me think that I, I should start using it myself here. Not that I'm old, I, I don't plan on having any of these problems yet, but uh, uh, sometimes the tendonitis aggravates. But you start uh, reading some of the mainstream uh, medicine articles, uh, yeah, they've raised uh, some serious questions uh, that we do have to pay attention to, I think. Um, you know, along with all these uh, ailments uh, that we uh, listed, where we can see significant benefit, you also have to consider that old folks certainly are at more risk for cardiovascular disease, strokes, and chronic lung disease, just to mention a few. And uh, so there may be some indication that uh, the elderly may be a little bit more at risk than you realize uh, with using cannabis. Uh, which alluded to a uh, uh, recent uh, presentation at the annual uh, meeting of the American College of Cardiology where the presenter uh, linked uh, marijuana use to a, a whopping 26% increased risk for strokes and a 10% increased risk of developing a heart attack or heart failure. Um, so those are kind of statistics that make great headlines. Um, and uh, I think we do have to consider it. Uh, as we've talked before, uh, you know, cannabis does in fact have some cardiovascular effects on the body. Uh, you gotta figure if somebody has underlying coronary disease, they could be at more risk. Uh, certainly, patients with chronic uh, lung problems, emphysema, COPD, uh, they run the risk of exacerbating their pulmonary problems, especially if they smoke and uh, for that reason, we especially encourage other uh, alternative method, uh, methods of use, including topicals, uh, uh, edibles, oils, tinctures, you know, other ways to get in the body, uh, even vaporizing, which a lot of folks use uh, uh, instead of smoking, can cause a little pulmonary irritation. Uh, so there's uh, some uh, perhaps increased element of risk for older folks uh, uh, with that. Um, and then there's just the overall concern that old folks may be more vulnerable to some of the potential side effects of cannabis and as a result have uh, increased risk to suffer morbidity as a result. Uh, um, you know, you think about uh, problems with uh, memory loss or confusion that uh, uh, can be temporarily exacerbated, uh, particularly with the higher THC products. Um, Increased anxiety in a, a person with dementia already has some anxiety element. Um, and uh, are they more at risk if you have an old person who's uh, kind of unsteady on his feet anyway? And uh, is he going to be at higher risk for falls and injuries? So uh, these are all concerns that get, uh, get raised uh, when you start talking about the use of cannabis in the older folks. 
Another uh, area of uh, significant concern that we have to pay attention to, uh, I believe, is uh, what we touched on before, the polypharmacy. Old folks end up on multiple medications uh, because they often have multiple medical conditions. And, uh, uh, you know, studies on polypharmacy, as we call it, uh, shows that there's uh, always a significantly increasing risk of interactions and uh, adverse drug reactions uh, the more medications you add into the mix. Uh, some studies have shown that uh, it's incremental. If you have uh, uh, 10 medications, your risk of having an adverse drug interaction is virtually 100%. Um, now, the body metabolizes a lot of uh, 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 medications and drugs uh, through common pathways in the body. Uh, primarily through the liver and the kidneys. And uh, when you look at uh, the metabolism of the pharmaceuticals, probably 60% of them are metabolized through a system in the liver that's called the cytochrome P450 system. Uh, this is a, a set of enzymes that uh, uh, basically breaks down the molecules, uh, attaches side chains, and otherwise processes them for the body to eliminate. Now, when you're talking about cannabis, most significantly, CBD, especially in high doses, directly affects the cytochrome P450 system, and uh, therefore, it has a potential of affecting all of your other drugs. So, uh, as a result, uh, even though we see the good side, you know, a lot of folks are able to get off some of their medications uh, with the use of cannabis. We also have to pay close attention to uh, what's going on with all the other medications they may still also need. Uh, you know, if you affect how they're metabolized, then you very well may need to make a dosage adjustments. So, um, something we need to pay, uh, pay close attention to. All right. I'm, uh, I guess I am old. I have to get my bifocals out here to read some of the comments in here. but. Uh, Yes, I'd have to agree uh, with Frank here. We've, we've seen multiple reductions in medications, and, and that's why we keep saying, you know, cannabis is, is uh, you know, I think excellent uh, adjunct in, in uh, uh, helping folks get off their medications. Um, you know, not always able to replace them totally, but you decrease the, uh, the number and uh, dosages, I, I think we're better off and less risk for the patient. So at any rate, in uh, summary, you know, I have to say there's, uh, uh, in fact, uh, you know, perhaps more areas we do have to be concerned uh, with the use of cannabis in the elderly. Uh, you know, it's not uh, simple, otherwise younger, healthy person uh, with, uh, you know, simple chronic back pain and no other medical problems. So we have to consider the whole patient here. Um, and... Uh, you know, there's more to consider, uh, um, you know, how, uh, how much benefit the uh, elder population could get uh, from cannabis. As we mentioned, you know, it's, it's really quite a small percentage. Incrementally, it, it is increasing faster than other populations. Uh, but when you look at the uh, number of old folks and the number of their medical problems, I think there's a huge number of people out there who could benefit. Uh, but, you know, historically there's multiple reasons why they do not uh, get involved with the use of cannabis. Um, I think there's uh, more to consider than just the fact that a lot of the older folks are worried about the, uh, you know, psychotropic or euphoric uh, effects, uh, which they often find disorienting or un uh, unpleasant. Uh, I'd say in the folks that I've seen, uh, the elderly are... Um, most common in quoting, uh, I'm not interested in getting high. I, I want the other symptomatic relief that they get. Um, so really we need to uh, do a great deal more study on uh, cannabis and uh, how it relates to these multiple other medical problems. Uh, I think both positive as well as uh, potentially negative. Um, now just going back to some of these uh, criticisms that have been raised, uh, uh, you know, we need to look at, at what are these studies really telling us. Uh, you know, again, uh, coming back to fun with statistics, it's a little hard to 
know for sure. Um, you know, when you look at uh, an increased risk of stroke of 26%, increased risk of heart failure of 10%, you know, what are we really talking about? Um, when I uh, tried to look into the presentation, I had a little difficulty finding the, the real number details. Uh, but uh, the method of the study always uh, by itself raises some question. This was kind of an uh, exit poll in uh, patients that were discharged from the hospital, and they were just uh, questioned about their use, uh, not only of cannabis, but other drugs. But then they run it through all their statistical analysis, and they think they come up with numbers that do have some significance. And, uh, but then there's no differentiation between a uh, chronic daily user versus uh, somebody who used it once within the last 30 days, uh, but they end up in the same statistic. Um, you also look at uh, the relativity of numbers. Uh, as I mentioned, just in the number of old people uh, in a population, 2.2% are now using medical cannabis. Well, uh, two years ago, that was 1.4%. We're seeing a 50% increase in uh, you know, the rate of cannabis use. Uh, on the other hand, it's still only 2.2%. Um, your risk of a stroke uh, in this population was 1%. Now it's 1.26%. Uh, uh, you know, how does that uh, you know, change your overall uh, management? Uh, so a lot, a lot of things that uh, need to be considered there. Uh, as I say, there's potentially negative uh, things you can say about it, but I think there's also potentially positive things. You know, we contrast this with some of the studies that have shown uh, the neuroprotective benefits of cannabis. Um, and, uh, they did uh, some uh, uh, mice studies on uh, induced strokes, and uh, if you had uh, cannabis introduced, you actually had uh, a significant reduction in the area of damage to the brain, you know, the size of the stroke, and uh, actually improved uh, post-stroke function. Uh, with the use of cannabis. Uh, heart attacks too. Uh, they've shown that uh, you uh, uh, can decrease the elevation of the cardiac enzyme, which is a marker for an injury to the heart. And uh, when you do imaging studies that show the size of an infarction or the dead tissue in the heart from a, a heart attack, it actually can be reduced uh, with cannabis. So. Um, you know, be facetious, you say, well, uh, okay, maybe I have an incrementally slighter, uh, increased chance of a stroke, but if I do have one, it's going to be smaller. So, uh, you know, positive and negative here. But uh, uh, what we're most interested in is, uh, you know, optimizing health. Uh, everything is a bit of a balance, you know, the uh, benefits versus the risks. And uh, uh, it still comes back to when you look at the, the uh, benefits, uh, that we can see with cannabis, uh, uh, it, it's uh, quite large. Um, you know, most of the uh, our risks are manageable, and uh, the more we can do to help uh, folks find that balance, uh, the happier we'll all be here. Let's trying to read some of the uh, comments here. to see if there's any other specific questions that uh, might be able to answer for you here. But uh, um, okay, well, I'm, uh, we'll try to keep uh, working on this and we'll answer questions as we go along. We've got more presentation we'll be making here. I know it's uh, kind of close together here. Hopefully we'll have uh, one of our other lovely ladies uh, talk with you next week. So have a good evening.